Hello and welcome to Electromagnetics 1. This is lecture number 11. We're going to be talking about the method of images. Well, this is a, a really slick technique. Uh, the method of images is a way to solve electrostatics problems in the presence of perfect conductors without solving Poisson's or Laplace's equation. So, um, as you're probably finding out now and working the homework, um, solving uh, these differential equations can be uh, can be complicated, especially for uh, complicated geometries that don't have a lot of symmetry. Well, what exactly um, is, the, is the method of images based on? It's based on something called image theory. The image theory states that a given charge configuration above an infinite grounded perfect conducting plane may be replaced by the charge configuration itself plus its image and an equipotential surface in place of the conducting plane. Let me unpack that a little bit here. Uh, this figure uh, shows a number of different uh, charge distributions. We've got a point charge Q, a line charge with um, uh, linear uh, charge density right here and then a volume uh, filled with a volume charge a minus a negative negatively charged volume right here down here we have a perfectly a perfect electrical conductor right here so in this in this region below this region I should say below this line we have a perfect conductor all right what image theory tells you is that you can replace this system right here with this system. If you notice what we've done is we've reflected each charge distribution about the line uh, the plane z is equal to zero essentially. See you can see how this one it's it's not shifted down it's reflected about um, the line uh, this, the plane z equals zero right here. All right? So that's the first thing you have to do. You have to reflect the charge distribution about the surface of the, co of the conductor. And then you have to change the sign of the charge distribution. So plus Q becomes minus Q. Positive rho L becomes minus rho L. Negative rho V becomes plus rho V. Okay. What, um, what is actually going on here is that um, I should say the way you're going to actually find the electric field due to this charge distribution now is you're you're literally going to treat all of these all of these charge distributions as if they were in free space and so um, if I want to know the electric field at this point right here I just basically erase this line and just say okay all of these charges now are in free space and I add the electric field due to this due to this, due to this, due to this, due to this, and due to that. Right? That's the basic idea behind image theory. So we don't have to solve Poisson's or Laplace's equation. We can simply use Coulomb's law um, when we're using um, image theory. In applying the image method, two conditions must always be satisfied. Number one, the image charges must be located in the conducting region. If you look at the previous picture, these are the image charges right here, and they are all in the region that used to be um, occupied by our conductor. So that's what number one is saying. And number two says the image charges must be located such that on the conducting surface, or I should say on the surface of the conductor, the potential is zero or constant. In other words, this is equivalent to the boundary condition that says the tangential component of the electric field vanishes on the surface of a perfect electrical conductor. So um, just going back to this original system here, if we didn't use image theory, um, we still would have the boundary condition right here that says the tangential component of the electric field all the way along the surface of this conductor must be equal to zero. Right? That's equivalent to saying the potential at that point is equal to zero. So. Um, when we replace our conductor with the images, we must do so in a manner such that uh, the electric field vanishes 
to the tangential component of the electric field still vanishes right here along the line where the surface of our conductor used to be. All right. Um, if you if you look at let's just look at um, the electric field due to these two these two point charges, the original point charge and its image right here. Let's say we're interested in the electric field at this point due to this one and due to this one. All right. So the electric field due to the original charge at this point, remember, points along a line connecting them. And in this case, it's going to be pointing down um, uh, to the lower in, in the lower right hand direction on your screen like this. All right. The uh, the electric field at this point due to the image charge which is negatively charged is going to be pointing at the exact same magnitude but pointing down um, sloping down uh, in this direction so you can imagine here if I draw a vector like this pointing that direction due to plus to the positive Q charge and a vector down here of opposite magnitude pointing in the Q direction what's going to happen is the tangential components are going to cancel and you're just going to end up with a Z component of the electric field at that point at that point let's see an example of this here we go here's the exact same situation we have a single point charge located above a perfect electrical conductor and so what we do is we replace it with replace the conductor with the image charge we flip the sign all right and the total electric field then is the sum of so let's say again we would like to know what's the electric field right here at this point due to a charge in the presence of a perfect conductor we replace the perfect conductor with an image charge and then we just treat this system as though these guys are are simply sitting there in free space so um, the electric field due to this guy based on Coulomb's law is given by this expression here's R1 okay so again we know the electric field to a point charge is equal to um, uh, the charge itself times this vector divided by 4 pi epsilon naught times the magnitude of this vector cubed right and we know the electric field due to a charge here um, evaluated at this point is equal to this vector times minus Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught times the magnitude of this vector to the third power okay this is image theory and again you convince yourself that you can convince yourself if you evaluate this expression anywhere along this line the tangential component of the electric field the, the field that lies along this um, surface will be equal to zero which is the boundary condition we have to satisfy due to the fact that we are interested in this situation where you have a charge above a, a perfectly conducting plane okay let's look at another example another image theory problem here let's say that we have a point charge Q between two semi-infinite perfectly conducting planes so here we go we've got a a charge located up here at Z equals B and X is equal to A alright and we have a 90 degree angle so this this quadrant if you will is all free space and then everywhere else everywhere out here and down here all the way out to plus and minus infinity in the Z uh, the X and Z uh, directions and actually in the Y direction also um, that's all filled with a perfect electrical conductor and we would like to replace this system with some image charges so that we can solve an equivalent problem where all the charges are radiating I should say not radiating all, all the charges exist in free space well how are we going to do that if we have two um, conducting surfaces that are at right angles well you need to think about for this problem before I show the show you the answer is um, what do you see when you look in a mirror? I should say, how many images do you see when you look in a mirror, uh, a right angle mirror like this? So just imagine now that this is you, and you're uh, looking into um, a mirror 
that uh, basically wherever there's this, this conducting surface, you've got a mirror, and then you've got another mirror down here. You may not remember this um, from physics, but you will see an image of yourself here. You'll see an image of yourself here. That's no surprise. But you also see an image of yourself right back here. That's a clue. That's a clue that we need three image charges for this particular problem. Okay, we need a um, a charge of equal and opposite magnitude here. We need a charge of the same magnitude here, and we need a charge of equal and opposite magnitude here. Okay, all right. So this picture really is it's a little bit easier to see exactly what's going on. So again, um, at along a diagonal line here, you have the um, one of the image charges. You have one image charge here and one image charge here. And so what you have to do to find the electric field due to a single charge in the presence of these two semi-infinite conducting planes, you have to add, for instance, let's say I want to know what the electric field is right here. I have to add the electric field due to this point charge, that point charge, that point charge, and that point charge. Right? It makes a certain amount of sense. It makes a certain amount of sense if you look at um, the orientation of, of these charges relative to the planes, okay? Again, we cannot have any tangential electric field along this line, nor can we have a tangential electric field along this line. So if you can imagine we're at this point um, right here, um, you can convince yourself that uh, the tangential electric field due to this charge, it will be exactly canceled by the tangential electric field due to that charge. Similarly, uh, the tangential electric field due to this charge at this point will be exactly ca canceled by the tangential electric field due to that charge at that point. Let's examine what happens along this line, right? So along this line, again, similar so a similar effect occurs. The tangential electric field due to that charge is canceled by the tangential electric field due to this one, and the tangential electric field due to that charge is canceled by the tangential electric field due to that charge. So we're satisfying the boundary conditions. Um, and the uniqueness theorem says if you satisfy Maxwell's equations plus boundary conditions, you have a unique solution. OK, that wraps up um, this lecture on the method of images. Thanks for your attention, and I'll see you in the next lecture.